and welcome back to Python class. Today we'll be looking at Boolean type in Python. How can we use Boolean in Python? That's what we'll be talking about today. And in this tutorial, you'll be exposed to several uh, Boolean values and how to make use of them. Then we also look at how to evaluate values and variables. We look at some examples to prove true or false of some variables. And also we look at how a function can be used to return a, bo a boolean. So that is what we are going to make use of. We are going to talk about today. So let's quickly start by working on an examples for example let's start with this print print 10 greater than 9 this is going to give us true when we print 10 less than 9 it's going to give us false when we print 10 is equals to 9 it's going to give us false when we print 10 is not equals to 9 it's going to give us true and when we print 10 is greater than equals to 9 it's going to give us true when we print 10 is less than equals to 9 it's going to give us false and also what else again okay then let's see the this one 9 equals to 9 this it's more or less like assigning 9 to 10 as a variable. Let's see, it's going to throw error. So take note of that when you are working. Then let's now try to put some variables and use a condition for it to know actually what is going to happen with the condition. So in that case, we are going to have uh, let's say a equals to 20, b equals to 33, I mean 200. So we are going to write an if statement. We say if b is greater than a, if b is greater than a, print. Print B is greater than A. Else print B is less than so automatically you can see that it's giving us b is greater than a why because a is 20 and b is greater than 20 so that's how to use conditional statements with your variables then we let's quickly look at some aspect of evaluating values and variables how can we evaluate our values and variables so the first one let's look at print bold print bold hello then let's see the output is telling us that is true telling us that is true then So also, when we have um, print full, print full 15 <coughs> is also true. So when we make use of boolean bool as a function to evaluate any value, is either give you 
is either give you true or false in return. That is just the, the information. It's either it gives you true or false in return. Mind you, remember you can also assign this string or number to a variable and ask for the book. Like now we can say and say print tool a. Remember the a we have earlier was 20. So to tell you a is 20. So that is that. Then when we have most values are true, it says almost all, any values is evaluated to true. If it has some sort of content, any string is true except empty string. And you see that? So when you try to evaluate the bool for an empty string, it's going to be false. Let's try that. Bool, we have empty string, it's going to be false. But when you have bool with a space between the string, it's going to be true because remember, space is a character. So then, any number is true except zero. Remember, when you put zero as your variable or your value, it's going to be false because boolean cannot be, uh, zero means false, one means true. Remember that. Then, any list, tuple, set, and dictionary are true except empty ones. So when you have an empty list, for example, print and we have a list this is an empty list it's going to give us false but when we have bool and we have cat comma dog this is a list that has a value so it's going to give us true so if you want to know if a variable has a value, then you can confirm the boolean to know if it is true or false. So if it has a value, automatically it will be true. And if it doesn't have a value, automatically it's going to be false. So if we want to try this one as a as a as a dictionary, it's also going to give us false because it's empty. And when we try it as, as a dictionary and we define the key, let's say key, key one, ratio, value one, one, comma, key two, ratio, value two. So when we print, it's going to give us true because it now has a, have a value. So and in dictionary, we, are, we have, in dictionary, we have key and value. Exactly now, while in list we have index and locations, index and value, and the index is also the locations. So that is how to confirm if a value is true or it is false. <coughs> then we can also use functions to return a boolean. We can use functions to return a boolean. And how do we use function to return a boolean? In that case, let's quickly define a function. Let's say def define my function, my func, then we give it a tab. I will say return true. Remember in Python, you don't write your T in small letter. You write it in capital letter, return true. Then print. I want to print out my function, and that is that means we have to call the function. So we have my func, and remember, I told you when you want to call a function, you are going to write the name of the function with the bracket. So that's why we are having true. So you can use your function to return either true or false. <clears throat> Mind you, you can also use a conditional statement which we've done earlier. 
and also you can use instant is instance is this instance using function can also be used in python so how can we use this first you need to declare a variable we have variable a already and we want to use the instance so we say print is print is instance then we put a bracket again and we put the value of the item we want to check the instance if it is an int or a string so now we have a a is the value we want to check comma int we want to see if it is an int so it's giving us true now let's try this thing again and put string let's see I said I says it's false because the value in a is a number and not a string so that is why it's giving us it's giving us false but if if is that the value in a is a string it's going to give us true so we can use its instance to determine that and this is what we are going to talk about when it comes to boolean it's all about true or false then let's quickly move ahead to python operators when we call when we talk about python operators we are talking about we are talking about the operators that we use to carry out arithmetic in python among the operators we have the addition we have the subtraction we have the multiplication we have the division we have the modulus we have the equation and i mean the exponential exponent exponentiation and we have the floor division how are we going to determine this we have the addition which is 2 plus 3 giving us what 5 automatically this is what we call calculator we can say a is equals to 2 plus plus 3 and print a we have five so that is how to use addition in python then the next one is subtraction we are going to say three minus one will give us two then a is equals to okay let's say b is equals to a minus four print b remember we have our a stored earlier from the addition of two plus three so and now i'm using that a to subtract four which is stored in variable b now i want to print b to know the answer and that give me one which means five minus one minus four will give us one then the next one is multiplication we can just see we can say c is equals to b b times b times a times times three remember our a is five our b is one one times five will give us five five times three will give us 15. so that means we are going to say print c and that give us 15. i hope you are getting it now then the next one is division then we are going to use our c divided by our a you understand since i have declared the variable so i'm using the variables now i have done the main one without variables and i'm using the variables now for you to know that okay you can use variable to do the divisions as long as those values are stored in the variables already so now we are going to have uh, G is equals to equals to C divided by we use the slash C divided by A and that gives us print B that gives us 3.0. Why do we have point zero? Because we are using the normal division line, which is that slash. Is that clear now? So when we want to do the floor division, which is 
the floor division earlier, we are going to have D divided by, which is double line, and that one we make everything round up, divided by D, and that gives us print V. We have three. Can you see that we don't have point zero after that in this one? The next one is the modulus. The modulus is used to is going to return the remainder. Three fifteen divided by five will be three remainder zero. Right now, let's see the remainder is going to give us if it's going to give us zero or it's going to give us three. So let's say D D modulus. This is modulus sign the percentage modulus A. Then print B. We have zero because it's going to return the, the remainder and not the main value. Exactly now that is modulus for you. Then if we have so what we mean by the remainder is 15 divided by 5 will give us 3 remainder 0, isn't it? So the remainder is what modulus will return. Let me use another one. Let's say let's say E no, exponential. Let's say F is equals to F is equals to C divided by 2. So clear now. C divided by 2. Then, sorry. F is equal to C modulus 2. Okay. Print F. I see that we have remainder 1 because 2 divided by 15 will give us 7 remainder 1. So the remainder is what the modulus will give you as an output. Then we have exponentiation, which is also what we call raised to power. So in that case, we can say what? We can say, we can say G is equal to C raised to power, raised to power what? Our C is uh, 15 raised to power, raised to power D. Our D is a, uh, okay, we don't know the value of D that we have already, but let's see what we have. Print G. So by the time we know, okay, it says 1. So that means our D is what? Okay, let's get a value then. Press power 2. Our D is 15. Our C is 15, sorry. So, press power 2. 15 times this power 2 will give us what? So G print D. That's 2 to 5. Can you see that now? So that's how to do the rest to power. Then we also have all these ones I did now were just the basic arithmetic. Now let's quickly go to the assignment operators that we have. We can use them anyhow we want and for example, we have the equal sign, and that we can say x equals 5. That means we have assigned 5 to x. We can say s plus equals 5. s plus equals 5 is the same thing as the same thing as x equals to x equals to x plus 5. So you can write it as x equals to x plus 5, or you write it as s plus equals 5. So this one is the shorthand. X, x plus or equals 5 is the shorthand, Y x equals to x plus 5 is the longhand. So also, we have... Um, oh, no problem. I will take note of that. So also we have x plus equals s we have a x x minus equals any value three is the same thing as the same thing as x equals x minus three 
that's what it also means so mind you as i'm putting the as i'm hitting the enter button it will be bringing out name error don't bother about that it's not an error it's just because i did not declare the x as a variable you understand so then the next one is that um we have how we have with the star equals so we can say x star equals three is the same thing as the same thing as x equals x multiplied by three that clear I think I will just define the x once and for all. x x equals to zero, so that we have something meaningful. All right. So we also have the divide equals. So we have x divide equals three. Why so you want to divide by three? So it's the same thing as x equals x divided by 3 exactly then we have um modulus equals which is x modulus equals 4 or 5 then ash is the same thing as x equals x modulus 5 that's what it means then we have x we have x floor floor division equals whatever number you want to divide it and it's the same thing as x equals x floor division six i hope you are following me so i'm intentionally commenting out the long hand writing the short hand and commenting out the long hand so that you can know how to write the short hand and how to write the long hand so also we have the the raised to power equals in the short hand we have x raised to power equals four and it can be also written as x equals x raised to power four then we have the amper the amper sign The amper sign is to to add. So I say add. So we have the amper sign, which is s amper equals three. So we have the amper sign. This is the shorthand, and it can also be written in the long hand as x equals x amper 3 which is x and 3 so you can see that the same amper equals float and int unsupported operator operand type this one does not support it but let's continue then we have the pipe the pipe equals which is x pipe equals pipe equals three as we are we are we're only assigning any value for it and it can be written also as x equals x pipe equals three which we also say is not a supported type so We have the carat equals, which is let's say x raised to power equals three or four, and also be written as x equals x raised to power four. All these are method of writing. Now you can see that all these ones are telling us that this is for float and int, float and int. So when you are writing your code, 
there are some places you will make use of these characters and it will tell you the operator the op operator type or the operand is not allowed so just go for the one that is easier because this carat is the same thing as the star star that we use for raise to power so you can easily change whatever you want to change and write it perfectly so that you can have your code running instead of throwing error then we also have the greater greater equals so this one can be written as x greater greater equals 3 and can also be written as x equals x greater greater than I was also saying it's not supported. So, also we have less less than equals. So we can this can also be written as x less less than equals whatever number you want to use. I can also be written in a long hand as x less than less than sorry x equals x less than less than three or five that we use. And that is so you can see it says unsupported operand types for whatever one we specify float and int. So these are the operators that we have in Python, and you can see for yourself those ones that are supported and those ones that are not supported. So the unsupported one, you can still go ahead to give a trial by making more research on how or when to be when you can use it how can it be used and when to use it well i need to show you the way it's supposed to be as well i'm showing you this way so you need to do more research to get this most especially people don't uh, really bother about all this last aspect of the uh of the operand because most of the operation they want to carry out can be carried out with the ones that have been done above okay let's continue then we have python comparison operator we have to look at the comparison operator now let me clear the screen so that we can have a clean sheet first exit your python shell or Qt the python shell so you can use Qt and you can use exit anyone we close the python shell then you type cls to clear your screen and enter your python shell again let's continue so we are going to python comparison operand in this case we are going to look at the equals equals i think i have done that using that earlier when we were using the print 10 greater than uh, 5, 6, uh, less, 10 less than 9, 10 equals to 9, 10 uh, not equals to 9. So those are comparison operators. And we've done that earlier. We don't need to go back there again. Then we are going to look at Python logical operators. Logical operators are the AND, OR, AND, NOT. These operators are mostly used in when you are carrying out conditional statements, but let's quickly look at how we can use it. Let's say x is equal to 5 and 6. Let's look at what we are going to have if we are going to have our response perfected. I see. He said x is equal to 6. Why is it not equal to 3? Okay, let's see. X is equal to three or six. Print X. Given us six. He's speaking the last one. So when you are making use of logical operators, you have to use it alongside with with your conditional statements. If X is three and x is 6 okay let me now do it this way 
x equals to x equals to 3 or x equals to 6. That's right, that's problem. It's telling me to what invalid systems maybe you meant equal equal or equal or equal instead of equal so this is what we normally do so we use this logically in our conditional statement like if we can now we can say x equals to zero if x is if x not equals to okay let me use the normal operator so that will not throw error not equals to three oh, i have not done the right thing sorry this is not what i want to do so i actually want to define x x equals to three y equals to six if x equals to 3 and y equals to 6 print oh no print x is 3 and that's is correct okay x is 3 and y is 6 that's correct okay now can you see that it said x is 3 and y that is because the conditions are correct now we want to set the condition again if x is 3 and y is equal to 3 print python is awesome else Print Python is logical. What do you see? It says Python is logical. Why? Because y is not 3. But we make use of AND statements. I said if x is 3 and y is 3, it should print Python is awesome. But if it's not, if any of the two is not three, then if you print Python is logical. Now, if I now go with or or statement or, then pick this. Can you see again? If x is 3 or y is 3, print Python is logical. Why does it print Python is logical? Because one of the condition here has passed the, the condition. I said if x is 3 or y is 3. So if x is 3, the condition is met already. If y is 3, the condition if s is 3 and y is not 3, the condition is met already. And if s is not 3 and y is 3, but the value of y there is not 3, then it has not met the condition. That means it's going to print Python is awesome. But in this situation now, x is 3, y is not 3, the condition is met. Are you getting it now? If I had put x is, is 5 and y is 6, the, the condition will still be met. But if none of them 
actually have that condition you will see the answer is going to give us let's try again so let's put this one as eight and this one as five all right so I see that it's giving us Python is logical now. Because if the condition is passed, I want it to give me Python is awesome. But no, the condition is not passed. None of the condition there passed. So it will go to the else statement. But if in a situation whereby I make use of all, and I said it's Six. I want it to tell me that Python is logical if the two condition, if any of the two condition pass. But it should tell me Python is awesome if none of the two condition pass. And you see that that the, none of these two conditions pass this because. The values here is 3 and 6, and none of this condition here has the value. So it will go to the else statement that is not is not a that does not meet the condition. So that's to show the else statement. But if one of them met the conditions, it will surely print out the statement. And mind you, for that one of them that is meeting the condition, that means either one of either y or z must have accurate value. To the one we have declared above. So if y if s is six and y is is three, it will still go to the else statement. If y is three and s is a sorry, if y is six and s is three, it will go to the to the print. I mean, it will go to Python logical. If x is three and y is six it will go to python logical because one of the condition has passed but if x is six and y is three it will fail that means it will go to python is awesome if x is six yes i mean if x if y is three sorry and x is another number it will also go to python is awesome because none of the condition has passed. So that is how to use logical statement. And you can also use not in your logical statement. How do you use not? It is this symbol. You press exclamation equals. That is not equals to. So you can do that in your statement. Then Python identity operator. How can you use identity operator? Identity operator like is is not. These operators sometimes when you use them, it will throw error that is not it does not support it. And sometimes when you use them, it will it will accept it. Those are identity operators, and they are still they are used most in let's say for instance x is y. Is, is for this I say it, it, it recognizes here and let's now see s is not y that's why it says it's correct because our s is not y is that there now so that is how to use it then python member operator we have member operator member operators are at the in and not in so if i if, if i have a a variable like a is equals to and i have this remember we use this in when we're dealing with string so i have like like five four six uh five four six three seven nine so let's just stop here now in this case i can say x in a true because in a we have x there x is 3 exactly now so we can find x in a that's why we have it as true 
then y in a we have is true then we can say and i'll say x not in a it says false but x is in a so it is false if x is in a but if x is not in a it is true what is our x x is 3 and 3 is in a so y not not in a to give us false so take note of that when you are dealing with operators then we have byte python bitwise operators the bitwise operators are the and the amper the, the and is the amper sign and the, that and also serve as the normal logical operators such as and the amper which is the the and servers and the amper the, amp, the stroke or pipe servers or then the carat servers xor servers xor then this symbol uh what's the name approximation yes servers not also this less than less than servers zero zero few left sheet zero few left sheet then oh sorry i have i have hit the enter button then we also have the greater greater which is signed right sheet so these are the operators that you can make use of now let's quickly try it out like x and y is two exactly now x and y is giving us two then x pipe y is giving us seven our x is what three our y is six and it's giving us seven it is all statements then x caras y is giving us five that is a x no x o then x simplify y and see that is giving us error or let me just see let me do it this way shouldn't give us error this x but that symbol represents not okay not x you give us minus four if it's not x it's giving us minus four because he has used the x or uh, function to calculate it to give us our output then we say not y is giving us minus seven then we have the x greater greater y with less less y then x greater greater y we have zero so these are the values that you will have when you make use of all this bitwise operator the reason why it's called bitwise is because it deals with most of the uh what, how can i put it it deals with with the binary calculations internally and bring out the the output remember anything that deals with logic logic also deals with the logic gate and that is being carried out with bits uh in bits like the binary which is zero and one so that is what is used to carry out the calculations here and the output are what we are seeing then we have the operator precedence 
operator precedence. What do we mean by operator precedence? That is hierarchy of of uh, solving the operators in Python. Any values in bracket are being solved first. Is that clear now? Any values in bracket, the bracket is called parentheses, are being solved first, followed by multiplication numbers, followed by the number that has multiplication, followed by the addition, uh, the subtraction and the addition. So that is how it carries out its calculation. There is higher degree of carrying out calculations in Python. Those numbers in parentheses have higher degree of calculations than those have higher degree of representation, let me say that way, than those that are not in brackets. So those ones in brackets will be calculated first before those ones not in bracket. And the signs also has their own degree. After bracket, which is the parenthesis, we it goes down to the multiplication sign. So after the multiplication sign, it goes to the subtraction sign, then pick up the addition as the last symbol to calculate. All these are the are what we are going to talk about in Python operators. And this is where we are going to call it a day for today. Thank you very much for attending this class and I wish you the best of the tutorials. Next class, we'll be looking at the data structures, which include the list, the dictionary, the tuple, and the set. These are the data structures in Python that we'll be looking at. And I will want you to bring up your A game in the next class so that you can you can easily understand and implement what you need because your A game to the class will be the one that will guide you through when you are applying whatever you learn in the real life application of Python programming. Most especially, these data structures are mostly what we use in every application we develop. So take note of it and Make sure you you get familiar and acquainted with it. Thank you once again. Like I do say, whenever you fall into error or you have a problem with the with the with what you are doing or the tutorial you didn't get it right, kindly reach out to me on Twitter. I'm always active there responding. So kindly reach out to me on Twitter. Search for Ademola Code, Mr. Indelibu, or you reach out to me at Tiny True, all on Twitter. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Thank you.